Yep, that's right guys, no compression in cylinder four. But I bet you guys will be surprised with how well this engine actually runs with those kind of compression numbers. So in today's video, I'm gonna fire this engine up so you guys can see how well this engine runs with virtually no compression being held in that cylinder. And then I'll dive into what the next steps are for dealing with this low compression issue and what the plan is for this car. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles in motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Now you probably noticed in the first part of this video that the compression test I was using was an OTC brand tester. And I gotta say guys, this is not a sponsored video by OTC, but I've actually used OTC products for my entire career. And I gotta say they're very high quality and they're reliable products. And I really prefer to buy these OTC tools whenever I have the chance. And for you guys, I actually have this OTC compression tester in my Amazon store as well. So if you guys wanna pick up this compression tester, check out the link to my Amazon store in the description below. So I'll give you a real quick run through of how it works as well. Basically this compression tester from OTC comes in this little hard box. It comes with a little instruction sticker right here on the lid so you're not gonna lose it. And it comes with a real high quality compression tester as well. So it's got this really nice long hose. It's got a real high quality gauge right here that you see it's kind of got the rubber outside. So it's got some shock resistance. It's got a little button right here that you can release the pressure inside the gauge or in the cylinder as well. And on this side, it's actually got a quick release fitting, which makes it really nice. So you actually don't have to connect this initially. You actually keep this to last and you actually connect this little hose fitting first that goes into your spark plug. And incidentally guys, I always put a little bit of anti-seize on these threads. So it's good to have anti-seize because these are actually steel and you're gonna be screwing this in to an aluminum alloy. So always use a little bit of anti-seize on these threads. So you can screw this piece in first and it's really short, that makes it really easy. And on this side, it's got that quick release fitting. So you basically take your gauge portion and you connect that quick release fitting to this side. Kind of like that. And then you go ahead and crank your engine over, and I like to do it about five times. And that gives you a good indication of what the total cylinder pressure is. And incidentally, guys, I also mentioned that these US domestic model turbo engines, these two liters at least, they typically have a little bit higher compression in a good cylinder. I would say right around 150 or 160 PSI. But as you guys saw in my number two cylinder, they actually had right around 135, 140 ish PSI. So it's a little bit low in that number two cylinder. But number four, that's a problem cylinder. It's not holding any PSI, it's not holding any pressure at all. So that's definitely the issue here. So that's the OTC compression tester, guys. It's a good tool, I've had it for years, and these things will last forever because they come in these really nice, durable plastic containers. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this sucker fired up. I'm gonna do a little quick time lapse where I install the ignition components and the battery, and then I'll go ahead and fire this sucker up so you guys can see exactly how well this engine will run at cold and at warm conditions with this number four cylinder that has basically no compression being held in it. And I think you guys are gonna be a little bit surprised. All right, I got the battery back in, I got the coil packs in, got everything hooked up and ready to go. So we're ready to fire this sucker up so you guys can see how good this sucker's gonna run with virtually no compression in cylinder before. sound so you guys can hear what it sounds like from the exhaust. Right now it's still at, right now as you guys can see it's right there at around 1500 RPM on the nose. And just warming up, still cold. And as you can see I still have my ABS light on. But no other check engine lights. Which means there's no misfire code even happening in cylinder number four yet. But eventually you're gonna see a little flashing check engine light down there because that's that misfire for cylinder number four that eventually pops up once this thing warms up. 
And then here's some footage of that engine running. Still at around 1500, 1400 RPM. As you guys can see, it sounds like it's running just fine. Even though, as we both know, cell number four has no compression in it now. And you guys will see, this will warm right up and it'll idle just at the normal warm idle speed. But there'll be that intermittent check engine light that'll pop up, which is that cell number four misfire. And at the end of the day, the reason cell number four is misfiring is because there's no compression being held in that cylinder. And as long as there's no compression being held in that cylinder, eventually it's gonna have that misfire code and this sucker is not gonna work. And it's not making full power, nowhere near full power. So I'll take a look at the engine here so you can see. But that's the engine, just kind of idling at this normal warm temperature idle speed. Sounds like it runs just fine. But when you do that compression test, like you guys saw, there's just no compression in cylinder before. So there you have it guys. This engine actually runs pretty damn well. It fires up, it idles really well at cold idle, it idles really well at that warm idle speed at around 800 RPM. And actually it's really misleading because you'd look at this engine, you'd think that this engine was running just fine, but there's that one intermittent check engine light that pops up for that cylinder number four misfire. And that is because, like that compression test showed, there's no compression being held in cylinder number four. So what's the next step? What's the next step for diagnosing this issue? And if you guys have a problem with one of your engines, and no compression in one of your cylinders, how would you guys approach this problem if something like this happened to you in your car? The way you guys should think about this is basically three fundamental ways you could lose compression in these engines. The first is the valves. So you basically have this combustion chamber. At the top of the combustion chamber, you have your exhaust valves and you have your intake valves. And if those exhaust valves or those intake valves aren't seating correctly in the heads, then you're not gonna be able to hold good compression in that combustion chamber. And the second spot is a head gasket. If you have a bad head gasket, you're definitely not going to be able to have good combustion pressure. And the last is the rings and the cylinder walls. If those rings and cylinder walls are worn, you can actually lose a lot of compression through there. Or if you have a damaged piston, like a ring land, you also lose a lot of compression through that ring seal. Because obviously, with a damaged ring land, it's no longer sealing those rings to the cylinder walls correctly. So that's the three fundamental ways you can actually lose compression in an internal combustion engine. And for my particular engine, I have a good idea of what I think it would be because I actually had these heads machined. I had the valves pressure tested and checked. So I don't think it's the valves. I think they have a good seat in the heads and I don't think it's that issue. I also put new head gaskets in this engine. So I suspect it actually has good head gaskets and that's not the issue. But I know this engine was actually used with a large turbo and a stage two tune on it. And it was actually used for motorsport activities. So I suspect the bottom end of this engine and the rings might actually have a problem. And that's something I actually couldn't tell when I was putting this engine together and when I replaced the head gaskets and I basically did the whole top half of the engine. So the next step for diagnosing this is actually gonna be to use a leak down test. A leak down test actually applies positive pressure to that cylinder. And you can actually hear that compressed air is escaping from your engine either through your intake tract, if it's one of your intake valves, through your exhaust, if it's one of your exhaust valves, or through your PCV system, which is tied to your crankcase, if you actually have a bad ring seal. So that's definitely what I'll be doing next, guys. I'll be doing a leak down test on this engine, and then most likely, I'll be pulling this engine out and looking at two liter short block options. This is a turbo engine. If I have to replace this short block, I have to find a short block that has a static compression ratio of right around eight to one. So that's gonna be the correct compression ratio for a turbo engine, and that'll allow the factory ECU to run its map and to make this engine run correctly. So I'm gonna wrap this video up here for today, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section. If you guys need fluids or any maintenance items for your Subaru or any Subaru specific tools for your car, check out my Subaru only Amazon shop. You guys can see the link in the description below. And then last, if you guys need factory service manuals or any factory technician guides, I actually have all those in PDF form on my SubaruOnly.com webpage. So check it out guys, it's a great resource and I actually include all the PDFs from the early 1990s through 2020. Okay guys, thanks a lot for checking out the video. I really appreciate it. My name's Luke, you guys are watching the Subaru Only channel. Until next time guys, later. Oh yeah, that's right. I saw the ignition fuse pulled. <laughs> that's, make sure you put the ignition fuse back in. Whoops. <laughs> That'll probably be an outtake.